the decisive battles of the Civil War were being fought. And shortly thereafter, the surrender of Lee sealed the fate of the South. The close of the war brought to the states below the Mason and Dixon line a swarm of greedy and treacherous parasites. These men brought all of their worldly possessions in a carpet bag, and they were quickly given the odious name of carpetbaggers. By ceaseless trickery, they contrived to control politics and commerce. They robbed and plundered. What they couldn't steal, they burned or otherwise destroyed. They looted public funds and even murdered those who too strongly opposed them. But a few of them came too late for the kill. Such men were Jake Jackson, Buck Sherman, and Toby Becker. By the time they arrived in the South, the tide had already begun to turn. So, you decided to give it up, huh, Jake? Yeah, I guess it's about time. I've said right along, the gravy was skimmed off of the South long before we got here. You recollect back a ways, I've been against it right along. Don't worry about it. I got you boys into this and I'll get you out again. What do you got in mind? Better come on inside. I'd rather not talk about it out here. I don't suppose I have to tell you the folks from these parts have decided to get rid of the carpetbaggers. Before long, there's going to be plenty of trouble. Maybe some tar and feathers. Yes, and even lynchings. Can't get out of here too soon to suit me. Me neither. So where are you going to go? Got that all figured out. I know a place where we might make a fortune if we can only put over a little scheme. What did you dream up now? Ever hear of the five cities of Cabola? No. Seems to me they have something to do with the Spaniards and Indians out west. That's right. Spaniards came up from Mexico looking for gold. They found it, but it didn't do them any good. The Indians killed every last one of them. I know there'd be a catch in this someplace. What's the matter, Jake? You tired of living? I'm no fool, Buck. If I didn't have a plan, I wouldn't have said anything about it. Jake, do you know the locations of these five cities? Right in the heart of the Navajo country. There's a little town on the edge of their reservation called Big Mesa. Not a large town. So Jackson, Sherman, and Becker came to Big Mesa and were able to establish themselves as reputable businessmen. For six months, they worked hard and lived within the law. Then Jackson decided the time had come to search for the legendary cities of Cabola. Mr. Jackson. Say, you look comfortable. I am. How are you, Mr. Whitney? <clears throat> Fine, thank you. Sit down and have some characters to use. Fine. Sorry I can't offer you anything stronger. <laughs> it's all right. What brings you out here on this hot day? A little something I wanted to talk over with you. <clears throat> About the Indians in the way. You know, even I'm smart enough to know that you, as the Indian agent, have a lot to say about what goes on at the Navajo Reservation. What are you getting at, Jay? Well, here it is in a nutshell. As you know, I've loaned out a lot of money around Big Mesa, just trying to help folks make an honest living. Yeah, well, I've heard you practically own the town. On the contrary. As a matter of fact, I stand to lose a large amount, unless some of my clients who haven't done so well up to now get a chance to make some real money. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, what's that got to do with the Indians? Just about everything. You know, it's been rumored that traces of gold have been found on their reservation. Now, if you'd allow the boys to do a little prospecting up there, they might get a chance to get back on their feet. No. What you suggest can be done, Jake. You know, you've only been at Big Mesa six or seven months, and... Six, to be exact. And while you've lived here, life has been comparatively peaceful and quiet. Why? Because the Indians have stayed on the reservation, and the white man has stayed off. I'll grant you that. Nevertheless, you can't hold back progress. I can and I will where the Indians are concerned. Let me tell you something, Jake. Twenty years ago, the Indian territory was aflame.
desperately cunning, burning and looting white settlers. But eventually the army stepped into this fight and the tide began to turn. Then the settlers themselves sought revenge and brought death and destruction to the Indians. So the bitter struggle continued and the Indians returned to avenge their dead and wounded. Last cooler heads prevailed, and a council of peace was called. Arano, the chief of the Navajos, smoked a pipe of peace with the commissioner of Indian affairs, and the limits of the reservation were agreed upon. The Navajos were given the land between Big Mesa on the east and the Teos River on the west, and between Fire Canyon on the north and the Santa Fe Trail on the south. The Navajos agreed to stay on their reservation, and the white men agreed to keep off. Later, I, I was appointed Indian agent, and I am here to see that the provisions of that treaty are lived up to by both sides. Now, what you ask would be in direct violation of everything that was agreed upon. Well, I'd be the first to oppose anything that might disrupt the friendly relationship existing between the Indians and the whites. So, I guess that's that. Hmm. Well, goodbye, Mr. Whitney. Goodbye, Mr. Jackson. And thank you for setting me straight. That's all right. That's good juice. Thank you. Come any time. So long, Jackson. Goodbye. prospect on the reservation with or without official sanction? Without it. That is, if we decide to prospect at all. What do you mean, if? Yeah, you mean to tell us you let Whitney talk you out of it? I'm getting sick of this game of make-believe. Why don't we take over this part of the country and run it to suit ourselves? Tired of wearing the cloak of respectability I placed on your shoulders, Buck? Would you prefer the one of tar and feathers you wore out of Atlanta? What'd you have to bring out it for? Because I want to remind you that our old carpet-bagging tactics won't work out here. We've got to play it smart. Explain it. I figure that Oso can steal a couple of us into the reservation sometime tomorrow without any interference from the Indians. Starting tonight and for the next couple of days, every Navajo on the reservation will be attending a big ceremony. Isn't that right, Oso? All Navajo go there tonight. All right, boys, that's the score. Many braves go out. Six days stay in Badlands. No water and only little to eat. Some not strong, so die. Animals eat them up, maybe. Today, those not dead make long race. And him who wins will become one of council. The council of the elders? White chief understands. Now, sun painting is finished. We ask great mystery to make young brave who wins wise for counsel. Here they come. Hey, that is your own son, Black Arrow, in the lead. Yes, my son, Black Arrow. Snake that walks next to him. That was 
most fine black arrow. Thanks, Mr. Whitney. Fire Canyon here. Zuniland beyond. All right, you go ahead. We'll follow. Me no go. Zuniland bad medicine. Oh, you're scared, huh? Zuni bring evil spirits. Fire Canyon, Zuniland. If Navajo go in, evil spirits kill him. No come back. That's another Indian fairy tale. Also, come back here. He really believes it. Well, I'll be... <laughs> all right, all right. What's funny? I didn't pay him yet. <laughs> come on, let's have a look at those Zuni spirits. cities of Kabola. Well, if we have, I've got a hunch it ain't gonna do us much good. Unless we can do a lot of talking. How do we know they'll understand? Yeah, we're in a tight squeeze, all right. You? Sure, him pale face. Me pale face. We, your friends. You savvy friends? Yeah, yeah, sure. We're friends to all the Indians. Ask the Navajos, they'll tell you. Zuni's no like Navajo. Zuni's no like pale face. Why pale face come here? Why, uh, we got lost. Yeah. Savvy lost? You turn us loose now, I promise we not bother you again. If turn loose, you run. Oh, no, no, no. Certainly not. Why should we? Masua Takanuso. If run, you'll die pretty quick. All right, Chief, that's fair enough. We won't run. Say, you gave me an idea, Buck. Come on, Chief, take it. It's all right. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Fire, God. Make fire from air. See if you can trade them out of some of those gold ornaments. Leave it to me. Hey, Chief. You give that. I give this. You too. If you've got plenty of matches, I'm practically out. I'm afraid the few I've got left will have to buy our way out of here. Hey, Chief, you let us go now. We come back, bring more fire stick next night. You savvy? Next night? You come back by and by, bring more fire stick? Sure thing, you can count on it. We bring other white man magic, too. Sushni!
Not a bad night's work, I call it. Yeah. All we got to do from here on is play it smart. Well, I'll follow your lead. Then keep your mouth shut about all this. We'll end up with more gold than you ever dreamed of. That suits me to a T. White men have no right on Navajo land. We go find out why they're here. Yes, if lost, we show way to Big Mason. If not lost, must be punished for breaking treaty. Huh. Looks like a couple of redskins have spotted us. What do we do? I don't know. But we'll let them make the first move. You come on Navajo reservation. You break treaty. We got lost. You savvy lost? You not lost. Him have stable in the Big Mesa. Let's settle with these two birds and get out of here, Jake. We, we take you to Hogan's, then hold for Mr. Whitney. You're wrong there. You're not taking us anywhere, savvy. We take. Mr. Whitney, my son. I'll take you home. Medicine man will make you well again. No. I die now. Must see Indian agent. Take me. Not wait too long. Mr. Whitney. Mr. Whitney. Father Black Arrow. The white man shot him. He's very sick. I wanted to take him home, but he wished to come here. Go in the house, get blankets, a pan of hot water, and some bandages. Quick. Who shot you, Arano? Can you understand me? Arano, Arano. You good man. Long time ago, Navajo's not killed your son. Your son, he, uh, he, uh, he. Where is he, Arano? You must tell me. Where is my son? talk before he died? Yep. Did he say you shot him? No, but you said they were white men. They were, I could tell that. But they were too far away for me to see the faces. I'm going to find out who trespassed on your reservation. And when I do, you can be sure that they'll be brought to justice. If you don't, there will be trouble between the Navajos and the whites. Black Arrow? Just before your father died, he, he told me something that I've always tried to believe. 
What's that, Mr. Whitney? That the Navajos didn't kill my son when they burned Big Mesa years ago. That he is alive today. I did not remember the Big Mesa fire. No, I guess you were too young to remember it. You see that, Mark? Can you tell me what it means? Navajo sign talk. That means lightning. Doesn't it mean anything to you, Black Arrow? Nothing, Mr. Whitney. Father Arano was killed by a white man. Navajo law says white man's chief must go to keep Arano company in heavy hunting grounds. You, his son, must kill Indian agent. But Mr. Whitney is the Navajo's friend. White man killed Indian chief. So Indian must kill white man's chief. I will not kill Mr. Whitney. Black Arrow, no talk like good Navajo. You know our laws, Black Arrow. If you do not kill Whitney, you cannot belong in tribe and must leave our reservation. I understand. We make Black Arrow run for his life. Will you change your mind? No. Then I have no choice. Get your horses. Kalaya! Kalaya! <laughs> You'll run over that hill. When you are out of sight, the braves will ride after you. If they catch you, they kill you. I have spoken. Carol Hyden Canyon, I know how to bring him out. Come, we stampede horses. Ha! Ha!
save Tom Whitney from the Navajo's vengeance? Will the villainous Jackson be unmasked? And what new deeds of terror will these men bring about? Don't miss Signal of Fear, the second exciting chapter of Black Arrow, at this theater next week.